All right, a happy Friday, a August 4th, which meant Anthony Davis was extension eligible and marked the anniversary when he can sign a three-year extension. Uh, as Adrian Wojnarowski has reported, Anthony Davis and the Lakers have come to terms. We are going to do a little bit of a deep dive into the Davis extension, basically how it came together, why it's three years, not four years, um, what it means to the Lakers, um, the contract structure. Um, we, uh, I went on ESPN yesterday, NBA Today, based on um, the looming possibility that a Davis extension could be a possibility, which has come to fruition. Um, certainly, Anthony Davis could have um, declined his early termination option and become an unrestricted free agent next offseason. But as we've talked about it and we've written about it, the way of the world is to sign an extension, take the guaranteed money, bypass free agency. And I do not blame Anthony Davis one bit. 65 games or more has not played since 2017-18. And when someone is giving me 170 or 186 million, we'll see where the salary cap goes. Um, on top of the 80 plus million I'm already in my back pocket, I'm doing that. And Anthony Davis rightfully has done that, uh, negotiated by Rich Paul, uh, his agent at Clutch Sports. Uh, a little bit about the Davis contract. So Anthony Davis had two years left on his contract this year at 40.6 million and next year at 43.2 million dollars. Next year was an early termination option, okay? Which is important. It's not a player option, it's an ETL and it we're going to explain why it became, became important here. When you look at what he had left on his contract based on the growth of the salary cap and I have it behind me on my whiteboard, and we tweeted about it. And there's a, um, it's on my um, on Twitter or X, I guess we can call that. Put it on Threads. I put it on Instagram. We basically have hit all the social media platforms here. Thirty percent of the cap this year, basically twenty nine percent of the cap next year. We have to condition ourselves to look at salaries based on the percentage of the cap as this thing is going to grow, likely here. And when you look at it from Anthony Davis's perspective, a player that's got 11 years of service, so he's a 35% guy, he's a $47 million player, he is below the max salary right now, about $7 million. He's below the max salary next year. And that's nobody's fault. It's basically when he did his extension, it's become a little bit outdated based on the growth of the cap. Remember that extension happened um, right in the height of COVID um, in 2020. Um, and we saw basically the cap flatline and now we've starting to see a little bit of an uptick here. The early termination option versus the player option. So when you do the early termination option and you have a trade kicker in your contract, okay, which Davis did, that allows you in, in the case of Anthony Davis, if he was traded, okay, to take whatever was left on his contract, including the ETO, and multiply that by 15%. So if Davis was traded, let's say um, this off season, basically 40 and 43, that's 83. Let's do a little math here, 15%. He would have got a $12.5 million trade bonus. Okay. If Anthony Davis had a player option, okay, 40, it's basically only the one year, which is 40.3. So you look at that, $6 million. So you are banking on him potentially getting traded, and the value of having an ETO was having more of a was having a greater value on the player option. Remember, if you are traded and you have a player option in your contract and you have a trade kicker in your contract, it is only the years that are not including the player option. So if you had a player option, you only take into account the current year. Now the downside is that if you have an early termination option, you are now extending off that year. 
So in the case of Anthony Davis, he is extending off that $43.2 million number. And we're going to come to how we got to all these different numbers and some of these extension rules here. If you had a player option, okay, you basically can decline that option and now extend off that $40.6 million number. So if you're Davis and you're looking at You're, you're looking at probably $52 million next year. It's a, it's a $10 million difference as far as in salary here. Um, the, the, it, it, it makes even or makes kind of up towards the back end here, but that's kind of the downside as far as the ETO where you're kind of gambling on the trade kicker. You're putting more value in that compared to the, uh, play, compared to the player option. In 2020, when Anthony Davis did, did this extension, we didn't know the extension rules were going to change to 140%. We were different. We were living in a different world um, then. So I totally understand the logic behind the ETO versus the player option here. Um, and that is why this is a three-year extension that starts in 2025, why it's not a four-year extension. You basically would have removed that $43.2 million number and replaced it with, with a $52 million. So instead of a, um, it, you know, three years, a 186, it would have been four years, I don't know, 240, let's say, for example, here. Um, how do we get to the number? So yesterday, we went, I went on NBA.com, uh, NBA.com, NBA Today, and we're showing three for one, 169 here. All these extension numbers that we're talking about, whether it be Tyrese Halliburton or Anthony Edwards or Desmond Bain or any of these players here, it's fluid, okay? So when we're talking about Halliburton extending and Anthony Edwards extending, we are basing it off the salary cap growing 10% from 136 to 149. The league has sent out projections here that is going to go to 142. So when we say up to it potentially could be up to that number. Now, in the case of, of Anthony Davis, we originally came up the 169, and as I've said, it is totally fluid, is based on a 5% growth in the salary cap this upcoming season and a 5% growth the following season. So you're thinking like, wait a minute, how do you get to 186? 186 is based off 10% growth in 2023-24, and a 10% growth the following year. So in 2025-26, the salary cap in that year would be $164.5 million. It could certainly be lower. That is the maximum allowed because of the 10% growth. That is why we are projecting the Davis extension at 186 here. When you look at um, 57.6, 62.2, 66.8. We are not going to know the actual numbers of an Anthony Davis extension until probably the summer of um, 2025. We're probably not going to know until June um, 30th, uh, 2025. We'll have a better idea next year. Listen, if the cap doesn't grow 10% next year, the Davis number automatically will come down here. So it's, it's a fluid number. It's going to be anywhere from 169 potentially up to 186. We're going to report 186 based on the growth of the cap increasing 10%. It's the same what we've done with Halburn. It's the same what we've done with Bain. It's the same what we've done with Jalen Brown. Listen, the Jalen Brown 304 number could be 285 at the end of the day, but we are basing it off a 10% growth of the salary cap. When you look at a player extending, okay, in the case of Anthony Davis here, Certainly the 140% rule is in play. However, the first year of an Anthony Davis extension, okay, which would be in 2025, 26, cannot exceed the maximum salary allowed for 35% of the cap. So let's say that we do 140% off that 43.2 number, right? So let's just do for 60.5 million dollars. Okay, Anthony Davis's number is not $60.5 million because the possible or projected max in that year is 57.6. It cannot exceed that number. So 
we put it at the max, 57.6. 35% of 164.5 is that number, and then we go up each year 8%. So the 140% is capped basically because we cannot exceed the maximum salary allowed. I hope you understand that, right? It cannot go further above 35% here. So Anthony Davis, three years up to $186 million. We will know a lot more next offseason based on the, the growth of the cap. We will know certainly what the final number will be in the summer of 2025 based off the growth of the cap the last two years. Anthony Davis, um, it has no impact as far as the Lakers this year. It has no impact on the Lakers next year. The ETO is now removed. Um, it, the, the number starts in 2025-26. You have Anthony Davis... Rui Hachimura, Austin Reeves, Gabe Vincent, LeBron could be a free agent based off that uh, player option he has next year. Um, following year, it's basically Davis and Reeves, um, uh, Jalen hood Shafino, Maxwell Lewis, um, and then the third year with Davis is basically him on an island by himself in 2027-28. I think it's good value for the Lakers. I think it's smart for Davis to sign that number based on his uh, durability. Uh, and as I said, we have to look at things as far as the growth of the salary cap in percentages, not in real dollars. The Davis number is 35% of the cap in 2025-26. It's potentially 34% the following year and 34% the other year. We can look at as far as where Anthony Davis is going to be four years from now and um, Hopefully the value of the contract, if it's at $66.8 million, still equals the value of the, of the player. But the Lakers could not have afforded Anthony Davis to go into free agency next year. They, they could not have done it. If he had a, another good year, he was going to get four for 212 from another team out there. So it's smart business by the Lakers. It's smart business by Anthony Davis to go out and do the extension here. Um, and I, hopefully everybody under, understood this, the video as far as how we got to that 186 number, how we come about doing the extension rules. When you do an extension, it's got to be a total of five years. Davis had two years left on his contract. Now we add those three years and how we got with those percentage. Have a great Friday. Enjoy your weekend in August. It is a balmy, warm day down here in, in Florida. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.